Hello and welcome to the next video of my sissy cosplay series. This time we are going to make the crinoline anther dwarves. So I'm using this pattern from Truly Ectarian. It's for an elliptical crinoline and it comes with the instructions and of course with the pattern itself. The pattern is printed on very thick paper so that's why I'm using the following copying method. I'm just laying the fabric and the pattern onto copying paper and I'm running my copying wheel over all the lines and all the markings. Maybe some trained tailor will die right now, but I think it's the easiest method if you don't want to cut your pattern or you can't cut your pattern because it's a multi-pattern sheet or so what. So I'm just doing it like this. I think it's the easiest way and it works best for me, but you can do whatever you want. Now I'm doing the same thing on the other side, so we have the marking on both sides of the pattern. Uh, I'm just following the line that already exists, maybe you can see them already. And that's because when we cut the pieces apart later we will have two different pieces and we need the markings on both sides. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just cutting out all the pieces, it will be six later for the back. The back is the bottom of the crinoline so that you don't have these free hoops and you don't step into the hoops when you're running or dancing. So it's for your own safety and an important part of the crinoline. And now I'm going to cut the vertical straps. These are the straps that are holding the hoops. So as you can see the length are already given on the pattern. So I'm just cutting them in the right length and the right amount of the straps and I'm just um, copying the um, markings so I know where the hoops will be later. So here are the back pieces, the vertical straps and this little thing called the crescent. We will do this later. And now I'm just pinning the back pieces together so we have just one long strap at the end. Uh, it's quite easy, you just have to make sure that the markings match together. Of course, we are going to sew everything together. This is not very historical accurate, but very important. I'm cutting off and cleaning off the seam allowance, so it doesn't stand up anymore and it's not so big anymore. Because we are going to sew it down to the back later so that it doesn't stand up anymore and we can slide in the hoops easily when we have the back completed. After everything was cleaned up, you're just going to pin the back in half, so we're going to have one long tube. And of course we're going to sew it together, I'm not showing it, I hope it's clear. And I also turned the right side out and now I'm just ironing it because uh, we want everything nice and flat when we make the uh, casing for the hoops. So I'm making sure that the seam allowance is nice and out, I'm just squishing it a little bit around and just ironing over it. Now we are going to close the back, so I'm just pinning the open sides together and going to sew it together so we have only one opening on the top edge of the back so that we can put in the hoop, but we have one closed ring for the hoops. I hope I'm, you understand what I mean, it will be clear later. <laughs> So, we have one long tube and now we are going to sew the casings for the hoops. Here you can see the markings and it just took forever. <laughs> so you're just going to follow the lines. So we have one, two, three, four hoop 
casings where we can put in the hoops later. So here we are. This is the super long ring with all the bone casings and we're going to make the belt now. So I'm just going to sew some D rings to one end of the belts and I'm trying it on because it's way too long and I want to cut up the excess and yes it's right that it doesn't sit in the middle so you don't have a weird bulge in the front of your belly and I'm just cutting off the excess of the belt and uh, try if it fits. <laughs> And I'm just going to make a very close zigzag stitching at the end so that the belt doesn't rivel up. And now on for the crescent. It's made out of four layers of the cotton I used for the back. And we're going to sew around the round edge. After this I cut it off the seam allowance and turned the right side out and now we're going to make seams and a lot of them. So this is because we want to give the crescent a little bit more stiffness and a little bit more hold because that's where we're going to attach the vertical straps for the hoops. So it needs to be stiff and strong and that sounds very wrong. <laughs> And we are just doing this, every seam has the same distance to the other one and we are doing this until we have no more space left. And again we're going to use my not very historical accurate overlock machine. It had a hard time doing this but we're going to clean up the edge of the crescent. That will be seen later. And here we have it. It's very more stiff than at the beginning. And I marked the middle of the crescent and the middle of the belt and I tried to stitch them together but it was way too thick for my needles. So I decided to sew it right now. <laughs> so I just made sure that the both pins were on the same height and I'm just sewing the belt and the crescent together because it needs to sit on the belt. As I said there will be the vertical straps attached later on. And that's what it looks like. Now I'm pinning on the vertical straps and you can see I had a hard time again but I wanted to pin them before I sew them together. Yes, we have five of them and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertical straps and five of them are on the crescent. As you can see they have to be very equal on both sides so we have an equal shape of the crinoline and I'm just sewing them to the crescent. I did this a few times so they are really attached to the crescent, yes, to the crescent, so that they don't come off or anything. So I repeated this step a few times, I think three or four times. And that's what it looks like on the mannequin. It looks a little bit weird, like a little octopus. <laughs> and now we're going to attach the two front straps. We are going to make a little loop around the belting and it shouldn't be too tight because they should move on the belting because you're moving in the crinoline and it shouldn't be too stiff. And again I just sewed the loop together. I'm not showing it and I'm not showing how I'm going to put the back and the vertical straps together. I just did it because my camera turned off <laughs> and now you can see I'm putting on the first hoop. Yay! The first hoop was a little bit difficult because the back didn't have the shape and I needed a lot of squishing and pushing and yes it, it was a little frustrating because it was the lowest one and a little hard 
but the crinoline became bigger and bigger and bigger and it was wonderful. The next hoops were more easier and yes, that's the first hoop and I'm going to add on more hoops. As you can see, I am just have this little space at the top where I can put in the hoops. The rest of the bag is closed. My boyfriend walking through the picture. No problem. Now that all hoops are attached, I'm just going to put in the other hoops into the hoop boning. <laughs> no, into the hoop casing. And here you can see the markings where it will be on the vertical straps. So I'm now going to pin the hoops in the hoop casings to the vertical straps. And it was a pain in my bag and everywhere else because I had to hand pin it and hand sew it and I just hate hand sewing. So yes, I did this with the last remaining eight hoops or so. And yes, it took forever and I cut it really a lot of it out of the video, but uh, it took forever for me, so it should took forever for you to watch this. <laughs> Every time I finish the hoop, I'm just sticking the ends in the opposite hoop casing, so I just have one ring. And that's what I did again and again and again and again. And this is the first of four hoops that doesn't go all the way around the crinoline. It ends at the sides, so there will be ribbons attached later to the ends that will be tied behind our butt, so it stays away from us a little bit. Okay, no more hand sewing footage for you. So this is the pattern I'm using for the drawers that we are going to wear under the crinoline. And I'm using the same copying method as before. You can see the paper is pretty thin. So I'm just pinning it to the fabric and rolling with my copying wheel over the lines. The pattern is quite easy. We just have two pieces. That's no bit magic this time. again we're going to cut everything out and I promise I ironed the fabric before but every time I fold it it ends up like this <laughs> and that's what the pieces look like so here you can see the top edge of the drawers and we're going to turn it a little bit so we have our inside seam of the drawers, the seam that will be between our legs. So the drawers are opened between the legs, I think for obvious reasons. So we're going to make a little roll ham so everything looks nice and neat. And that's what we're going to do for all four edges.
want to have some lace on the bottom edge of the drawer, so I'm just going to make some big hand stitches to make just nice ruffles. And I don't like it to make it by the machine, so I'm making it by hand. And you can see it laying on the ground, and I'm just pinning both ends of the lace to the ends of the drawers, so it matches. And then I'm just raveling it up, so the length is the same as the drawers, and then I'm just arranging the lace, so the ruffles are evenly everywhere. Now I'm sewing the piece to the bottom edge and I'm just pressing the lace a little bit down so it doesn't move too much while I'm sewing it. And then I'm just clothing the only open edge I'm just having. And then we have a closed leg, well, an opening on the inside. So at the top edge we are going to make some casing for a ribbon that will be attached later and that is for just holding the drawers together. Here are both legs, so I did everything the same on every leg. And now I'm going to push the ribbon through the boning, uh, through the casing, not the boning. <laughs> and I'm using a big safety pin for this, so it's easier to push it through the casing. I'm starting at the front of the first leg and I'm just going all the way through it and then I'm going to continue on the back of the second leg so we're finished at the front again. So, that's what it looks like. It looks way too big, but uh, that's what they're supposed to do. So here you can see everything on me. I'm already wearing the drawers, the chemise and the corset. And now I'm putting on the crinoline. Here you can also see the rose ribbons I attached to the back. can see a little close-up on my mannequin so the ribbons at the back of the crinoline are attached to the open hoops yeah that's it that's the crinoline and next time we're going to make the skirts the first two petticoats